Hi, I'm David Hall. I'm a family physician and I work at the East Liberty Family Healthcare Center. I've been here for 36 years and what I do here, I'm the medical director and the joy I get to care for patients as a family physician pretty much day in and day out. Um, and I continue to enjoy working here. Sign me up. Hello, my name is Dr. Daryl Jones and I'm the chief of the Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire. I've been a firefighter for approximately 33 years now, uh, 20 years in Aliquippa and 11 years here in uh, the city of Pittsburgh. I have a uh, bachelor's degree in public management from Carlo University, a master's degree in public management from Carnegie Mellon University, and a PhD in public safety with a focus on emergency management from Capella University. So I have to say that um, being part of an organization that has a mission to show God's love um, by providing quality whole person care to the underserved, I still kind of committed to that mission, that it's a good mission to get up and do. But day in and day out, just the interactions with the patients, um, patients um, trying to use skills as a family doctor to help individuals and uh, the, the many times people are so thankful for what we're trying to do and help them and and we pray for our patients and some of the joy is when our patients actually pray for us it, it kind of gives us a vision of of what this care is about I do first and foremost is my family I have a wife and a son who I love very much and I want to make sure that I can provide for them the best that I can. The second thing that motivates me is my family, my extended family, and it included my parents. They were hard workers with a hard work ethic, and they taught us that every day you have to get up and go to work. So last but not least is my desire to help people. I want to reduce the risk that the citizens of Pittsburgh face every day, not only from fires, but from all hazards. And that's what I uh, try to do. Every day I get up in the morning, I seek perfection. Knowing that I am not perfect, uh, if I reach for perfection and fail, then chances are I am going to hit excellence. And sometimes excellence is good enough. The bottom line value or image of leadership is this idea of servant leadership, that, that the leader is really there to serve and promote the giftedness of, of, um, of the persons that are being led. I, I have the distinct privilege of working, I think, with some of the most wonderful, talented, gifted physicians on this side of the Mississippi, um, and, and trying to encourage and um, allow people to be in a situation to succeed in, as providers of physicians and nurse practitioners and PAs. And I also feel that our nursing and whole staff um, looks to the medical director. So that servant leadership is really important to me. And then in a large way that I'm willing to live the lifestyle that I'm being, I'm asking others to. So I still um, feels very important for me to see patients, to have the same schedule as the other doctors, to round in the hospital, to do Saturday hours, to live the life that I'm, I'm trying to uh, promote others um, li living and serving here at the healthcare center. First is courage. It takes courage to lead. Oftentimes, organizations do not want to change, even though there is a need for change. And the people who I supervise sometimes do not want to change for various reasons. And I have to reach out to them, sell them on the need for change, and convince them that a change is in their best interest. Oftentimes, people dig their heels in, and they resist change strongly, and there's where the courage comes in. 
to be able to take the hit. Second thing is integrity. Uh, you have to be out front if you're going to be a transformational leader. You have to lead with integrity. That means leading from the front, leading people and asking them to do things that I too am willing to do, but asking them to take the point. So you lead by example. And finally, the last thing I want to demonstrate as a leader is my ability to stand with my people, to be and set an example of what uh, a chief in the Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire is supposed to do. That means every day having command presence, uh, not only uh, having the title of chief, but actually demonstrating what a chief should do, setting the example. In some ways, the very existence of a healthcare center that's been here 36 years serving the needs of the poor and showing God's love is, is in a large way, probably the, the best accomplishment I've done. But as I, even this morning, I was sitting down talking to one of our physicians and hearing their commitment to serving God and serving uh, the patients here, that I realized that other people have captured this vision, that it's it's been spread to, we now have about uh, 12 providers altogether, and others have captured this vision and are still living out this uh, role of service to the community and kind of staking out health care to be a place for uh, godly people to to care for people with high quality medicine. Um, I, I think as I uh, reflect on best accomplishment, having others model what I've been trying to do is, is I think a, uh, right up there with the highest uh, uh, things I'm proud of or glad to have been part of. What is my greatest accomplishment as a leader? My greatest accomplishment as a leader was actually becoming the chief of the Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire. I started my career in Alaquipa, uh, just about 30 miles north of Pittsburgh. We were a small department. I was one of nine people in that department. And in 2007, I was uh, named chief of the Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire, a 656 uh, member department. So what got me here was preparation and I'm doing a lot of studying and working hard. And my parents used to tell us all the time that where preparation meets opportunity, great things can happen. So I was prepared. I had prepared myself through my education, through my experience. When the opportunity came for me to uh, be able to uh, acquire this position, I was ready. So the answer to that question is, I, I, I'm also blessed with being married to one of the most wonderful women that I can ever be imagined to, Suzanne, and I have six kids, um, which are some of the best kids in the world, uh, ages uh, now from 40 to 21. So the most challenging thing over the 36 years I've been here are trying to balance um, giving uh, the, the healthcare center is uh, wonderful and great, but it could probably use up 20 hours a day. But I also have this commitment to my family and uh, nurtured and cared for by these wonderful family members. So the most challenging thing is trying to find the time and the balance to be um, good uh, with with uh, family and and kids and my wife as well as balancing the ongoing needs of the the role of, of medical director of the healthcare center so that balance I've not done as well as I should have probably especially when the kids were younger but it's been a challenge and it continues to be uh, a joy and a challenge my job holds many challenges and that's what makes the job so exciting and make it a great job. 
uh, I have challenges concerning the safety of my personnel. I have challenges concerning the safety of the public. And both of those are at the top of my list. I want to reduce the risk to the public and thereby reduce the risk to my personnel as well. So I work every day trying to make sure things are, are happening. Uh, legislation is being passed. Uh, new programs are being instituted to educate the public on the dangers of uh, fire and the risk that they face so that we can reduce uh, the injuries and the losses due to fire here in the city of Pittsburgh. If we reduce the losses and, uh, and the number of fires in Pittsburgh, I by default uh, increase the safety of my people and that's one of the top challenges that I have. What's something that not a lot of people know about me? So I don't have a lot of secrets. I, I, um, not a lot of things that are hidden um, or that people don't know about me. But the kind of the things that are not well known are, one is I'm a second cousin to Andy Warhol. Um, my grandmother was his godmother. I don't know what kind of job she did as Andy Warhol's godmother, but that's a true statement. I'm a, a blood relative of Andy Warhol. The other thing is I met my wife and, and uh, we first met in uh, a trip to uh, Eastern Europe and uh, uh, have very fond memories of uh, Budapest and walking along the Danube River in, in, in with this lovely 16 year old who uh, we've been married to now 42 years. So um, I met my wife, I could say I had my first date with my wife in uh, Budapest, uh, Hungary. It would be, not a lot of people know that. I am an avid motorcyclist, or in some cases, people will call me a biker. I have a uh, Honda Goldwing motorcycle that I love to ride. Uh, I love riding it with my wife. We go on road trips, and uh, I, it's a chance to uh, relax and unwind. Uh, when I'm riding on that bike, there's uh, nothing in that helmet but me and God, and it's a little solitude and chance to, to uh, think and reflect and decompress. And uh, I love it. I ride all year round. Uh, I'm not afraid of a little rain. I might hesitate a little bit if there's some snow on the ground, but the cold temperatures and uh, other than that does not bother me. Well, I'm hoping I'm not leaving real soon, so I don't want to just leave a message. But the the um, the the main message I think to that the most important things in the world are not things, or or um, IT things or electronic messaging, but relationships are the most important relationships with God, that there is a God, that we live and we move and we have our being, and a God that loves us, and, and so relationship with God is real important. And then real relationships with people, our, our family, our uh, people we know, that, that relationships of, of caring and love and um, serving one another um, are, are the most important things. And if I had to say a message is, like put down the, the electronics and, and try to care and have relationships with real people in real time and um, live, live life fully uh, in relationships. What message do I have for today's youth? My message would be do not give up. I know there's a lot of things stacked up against you, but you can fight back. The tool that you should fight with, the weapon, should be your education. Get your education, continue to train, find something that you're passionate about and go for it. Do not accept no for an answer. You can do this. I am an example. I hope that others will follow me.